The first round of sampling was done at the end of January, and we tested all six locations, the three wells and the three yards. We went back in March and tested the three wells again. So there was two rounds of sampling of the wells and one set of sampling from the yards. There were some wells where the property owners said they would give us permission to test their well, but prior to going out there a couple days before, I called the property owners and they said, they said my well pump's burned out, I can't, you, know, you can't pull a water sample out of it, and I haven't had time to swap the well, the, the pump out of the well. So we just sampled where we could collect the sample. Correct. Can I just ask one thing, Joe? I have another question. This area, Southeast Georgia, has a pretty dynamic tradition. Water moves through it fairly well. Changing precipitation into the stars and diminished droughts as far as home goes. It seems just common sense that high flows would push more material into places where there's superficial activity and breach by ditches and canals and stuff like that. At the top of the aquifer in this particular community is the CSA trail. And those trains pass over those lines and operate through the track structure and then all the way down. And during wet periods, the trains act as pistons in a very long pump. And so if you've got a lot of rain and you've got a lot of rail traffic, which occurs here, and you've got a steady pumping of groundwater through the superficial aquifer down draining. If it's dry, that's not occurring. If you were testing on those two different periods, you would probably get different results from those tests, wouldn't you? It depends. The testing that's done at CSX, they have 100 wells they've been tested since the mid-90s. But how far down the way Wait, 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 There is a compendium of data. They collected Every, they started collecting quarterly, so they had samples collected in the summer, the spring, the winter, and the fall. Now they do semi-annual sampling where they collect in the spring and in the fall. We have not noticed any difference seasonally. Okay, so that's one part of it. The second part of it is they also determine the groundwater elevation in each of the wells when they sample. We have not seen any variation based on changing in elevations of the water table. <laughs> this would be what you're talking about, where if it rains a lot, the superficial aquifer is going to be higher. If there's trains or a building or something, they may depress that superficial aquifer. So we haven't seen any trends over time, seasonally, or any trends based on the elevation of the water table change. That would lead us to believe that there's a seasonal variation or something like that going on. Now, if we had detected something that we were concerned with, then we would go back and do additional rounds of testing, and at that point, we may test over every three months, every six months, to try to get that time trend to see if there is an influence. But we didn't find anything above any health-based standards that we were concerned with, so the testing was stopped. But again, if we had found something, we would have, like you said, How far down gradient, how many wells, and how far down gradient on the <coughs> CSXS? What's the scope? Okay. How okay. far down gradient on that superficial so aquifer? Lay out a very discreet part? No, because the contamination is limited to their property. And they have recovery wells along the boundary of their property to capture groundwater to prevent contaminating groundwater from leaving their property. Do you know that those are 100% effective? They have, what they do to show that they're effective is they show that they test the groundwater elevation to show that the groundwater is, flow direction has changed and it's flowing into those recovery wells. It's like sipping on a straw. It's like putting a straw in a coke and sipping it. You see the water go down. You don't have right? a well below well, that when you don't know. Well, we have wells throughout three different aquifers going down through the deep aquifers. We have it in the shallow, the intermediate, and the deeper. So we have them across different aquifers. It's not 101 wells all in the superficial aquifer. It's through the very different, it's the different aquifers, and the it's across the breadth. The superficial aquifer below their boundary, you don't get it. 
they have wells, yes they do, they have surficial wells across the street from the canals from the CSX boundary where they have brown wells. Across the street. I'm sorry, across the canal. Going across towards, the canal. across the canal, going into the neighborhood over by, I don't know the name of it. But that's in their document at the area. That's where they're testing, and they have delineated the extended groundwater contamination in the background. So they have a picture. They can show a picture and say, is it's it correct to say mm -hmm. that you don't have a complete spread of coverage of these wells? No, it's incorrect to say that. We have a complete spread. We've approved their delineation in groundwater, which means we know the extent of contamination from CSX in groundwater. Okay, hold on. This lady wants to have our second question. 